Hello and welcome to a GP Feature Overview for Purchase Order Prepayments, a GP 2013 new feature. I'm Devin Southall from Software Solutions Group, a Microsoft Dynamics partner in Western New York. Let me show you the Purchase Order Prepayments feature in GP 2013. Here I am in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 on the Purchasing tab. Let me go down to the Setup. And I'm going to go to Purchase Order Processing Setup. On the screen, right here is the new section where you can allow purchase order prepayments. The checkbox here to create a manual prepayment from Purchase Order Processing is if you're going to process manual payments where you're not going to actually want to cut and print a check, such as an ACH payment, a credit card payment, etc. I'll show you how these work. You can add a password so that people can't do it unless they know the password. And then you can add a prepayment account. I'm going to show you how the accounting works a little later so you can decide what account you might want to enter there. So here we are on the purchase order entry screen. And you can see down here there's a new field called prepayment. This one's grayed out, meaning that someone's already entered a prepayment. You can only do one prepayment per PO. If I press the blue arrow, I can see the details of this $200 prepayment. We can see that it's a computer check on the Uptown Trust check checking account, and there's the check number, the date, and so on. If it was a manual payment, we would see that information over here. So here's a PO that we've just entered. Notice you can see that now the prepayment spot is editable. And this is a PO for $500. So I'm going to enter a prepayment for $500. Once you enter the amount, you can use the blue arrow and actually put in the details. So if I wanted to do a manual payment, I would change the radio button to manual payment and make my selections. But I'm going to show you a computer check. So I'm going to change it to computer check and there's really not much more to do at this point. I'm going to hit OK and you're going to see an unequal sign. And I'm going to hit save and close out. Now, if I did a manual check right now, that would be posting and we would see posting journals pop up. For a check run, there's a couple more steps. I'm going to go down to the edit check batch screen. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start a batch ID for PO checks. When I hit tab off here, ask me to add the batch. I'm going to say yes. It's very important. Notice it's PO checks, it's computer checks. You want to check this box, this box that it's a purchasing prepayment batch and specify your checkbook ID. So at this point, if you were creating it from somewhere else, there's no transactions. But if I'm on the edit check batch and I hit redisplay, now all the POs that were sitting out in the system ready to be cut shows up. Now I don't have to select them all, but if I want to, I check the ones that I want to cut right now. And I go through and print the checks like normal. So I'm going to make them stop to top bottom graphical so that we can see the details. And we'll run them to the screen. And notice on our check stub, it shows our PO number and the amount that we're paying. So there's a little more reference. And we're going to post these. All our posting journals. And it posted. Now, if I go pull back up that PO, you can see that my unequal sign has gone away. So the the prepayment has now been taken care of and I hit the details, I can now see my new check number. Now here's the accounting that I talked about earlier. If I pull up the payables transaction inquiry vendor, you will notice that for Ace Travel we have an open payment. It looks unapplied for the $500 and this is the check we just cut. The one odd thing is if I drill in, I really don't see my PO reference here at all. It's a little unclear when it's in this prepayment not yet received state what this is. Now if you do go into the apply screen, you will be unable to apply this payment. So that's a good thing. The other thing is on all your trial balance reports, you will see that, run, that payment 
as though it's an unapplied payment. Here's my $500 payment. It's showing up on my age trial balance. So that goes back to the accounting question. Normally you would think that you would want to enter, say, a prepayment, a liability account in that setup account, but because the balances are really kind of showing on your accounts payable and showing on your trial balance, my suggestion would actually be to enter the accounts payable account since it is showing here. If you wanted to use another GL account, I would suggest using Smartlist Designer or Smartlist Builder to um, be able to generate a list of all your unapplied prepayments so that you can balance your AP account a little more accurately since these prepayments are going to show on your trial balance for your AP. So here you can see that I've started a receiving transaction entry for this PO and notice that my prepayment's showing up and there's my total balance of zero. If I was doing a partial receipt it would take a partial prepayment or if the other way around that my prepayment was partial for the whole invoice we might have a balance. I'm going to go ahead and post this. So now you see on the payables transaction inquiry, here is our invoice that we just posted with an unapplied amount, a fully paid balance, and there's our payment. Now the payment does show that it's applied against the invoice, so it looks pretty clean at this point. If, of course, if it was a partial prepayment, we would have an outstanding balance remaining on that invoice. So I hope you have enjoyed our presentation on purchase order prepayments, a new GP 2013 feature. Feel free to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.